Necrophose, you know, uh, is only right clicker, but Necrophose has a has Goshard as well, potentially. I think it it could be a bit of trouble, remaining. but uh, I'm pretty sure they can run that mid as well. I'm uh, I think they can swap the lanes. OG has generally always been a I think the team that consistently have had uh, both carry and mid swap more than most teams, as uh, No Tail played a lot of mid heroes. Uh, for, for quite some time, honestly, and they did not have the most time to think about it, so... But they could uh, mess with Seeker a little bit, but Seeker has so much reserve time, even if they get surprised, they're gonna have time to think about it. Like OG, uh, perhaps the only weakness that Seeker can really exploit is maybe OG's lack of AoE, which is a little bit on the low side coming out mostly remaining. just bat rider and earth spirit um uh, there's not really many heroes that can that can truly punish that and well not anymore lena the pick for og should uh really secure the terror blade safe lane lena should be going towards that mid lane as we have uh, death prophet ember spirit both going to get banned out not many heroes for secret that will have a lot of mobility remaining. for the life stealer and also will have a good matchup up against that lena five seconds remaining I don't know, if you want to run like a mid lane Marana, it's not the best, but it will give you like a little bit of both. Queen of Pain has a little bit of both, and she's still in the pool as well. And they certainly do have their options for that, uh, for that combo. Volker. You may now select your heroes. It is going to be a, a mid one invoker, then we are. Yes, going to be in for a treat. They're going to kind of leave this life stealer out to dry. Again, no real ease of access here for the life stealer and, and kind of tough matchups, even if he did have them. Uh, just trying to kill off a terrible blade as life stealer takes so, so long. And because it does take so long, the odds of him getting off that Sunder just going to increase. But uh, this is going to kind of combo up a little bit better in the early game here for Team Secret. Rubik and Chen, again, should be landing these stun combos most of the time. And the stun combos could definitely use a killing blow. And Sunstrike certainly seems like a not terrible one to have. So, yeah, for Team Secret, they definitely have a lot Five going for them. But remaining. it is kind of a, a little bit of a question of how much... This Rubik and Chen are able to get done because you know, mid one may be an invoker god, but Jerex is pretty good on that Earth Spirit, and Resolution can very easily pile in damage if the roll in is going to land. Yeah, they definitely have the potential to to destroy this invoker. Uh, Poppy on the Chen. Chen is not a good reactive hero. Uh, he kind of has to like set up before if he wants to counter anything, but. Uh... So I'm a bit worried about mid one in particular that he's gonna have a hard game. So I think that's gonna matter a lot at the start of this game, uh, especially in the mid lane. But other than that, it's gonna be pop rotations and responses to pop rotations. I mean, every game is like that, you know, it's the fours versus each other, and who can win the early game is it's generally what most game comes down to. And this game is very different because there's a Shen on one side, which is not common. Prepare Usually it's battle. two roamers, you know, like a a clock versus versus uh, earth spirit or you know spirit breaker versus shaker stuff like that is the most common. So, well, let's see if your is kind of knows how to handle uh, Shen instead. It is definitely much different going against that Shen, and he will roll out. He'll be fine. We spotted, of course, but uh, yeah, just just trying to roll in towards another four position here. We're trying to battle them as earth spirit. Uh, usually going to be reasonable, but up against Chen. You're going to have to be going to a scenario constantly where you're just kind of racing against his creeps and 
it's very easy to underestimate how much damage those creeps are actually able to do. Earth Spirit's fairly bulky, but uh, as long as Puppy has a creep with him, then he should be, for the most part, safe. But if he is going to go down, we'll make you pay for it with a lot of right clicks back towards you. But uh, looking at Secret now, as they do load out into their lanes, it looks like it's going to be pretty much exactly what you would expect. And for OG, it looks like it uh, may be exactly, well, not quite what you would expect, Batrider. S4 is going to go towards the safe lane as they do send No Tail, or think about sending No Tail, down to the bottom lane where Metamorphosis yeah, is going to be really hard for him to deal with, but this is going to make him much easier to gank by the Chen. I think these are like uh, trying to mind game each other. Uh, I do think this is the favorable matchup for OG though. Having Bat versus Neko and having Terrorblade Blade against Knight. That's, that's the dream scenario in laning in my opinion, that it's going to be a bit... <laughs> Worrisome that your Tidal Blade is offlane though, but this is what you want to have happen as OG. These are the hero mashups you want for sure. So that's I think that could be a great benefit for them. And uh, I think it's going to be somewhat hard for Shen to kind of make up for that. And your Rex are going to start with just blocking camps. And uh, Resolution is going to have a pretty good matchup mid, if not a, a very favorable matchup in my opinion. I, I really like OG's laning. It's very strong. The Absor, not really able to touch this lane. If he gets close, he will take so much damage at Ace. Is struggling as well, so... Yeah, the Chen, of course, needs time to get those creeps up. And as you said, like, typically he goes for a little extra farming. He'll run into Jarax and really put the hurt on that Earth Spirit. But, uh, yeah, as far as applying pressure back to No-Tail, Lifestealer is, again, not the hero you want if you're going to try to kill off a Terra Blade. Lots of armor, low health, so feast... Doesn't really do all that much, and your right clicks will be uh, not doing all that much either, so No Tail should be pretty comfortable here. Again, as long as he keeps his eyes open, as long as Fly is kind of waiting out in the wings to spot an incoming Chen, they can actually even do this, just smack Yapsor around. Oh, a bit. No Tail is no -tail. very far away. Yeah, maybe a little bit too far. He has up. a TP. The is coming around from the side, and they will have a clap. That's going to do a good lot of damage, thing. but he will be able to teleport uh, to all the way thing. back to the fountain. Yeah, he lost too much. It was I thought it was a mistake to keep back the fountain, but then I realized it's like he, he went down to ten HP, so I think it's good. But that was a really good move from Secret. Uh this is gonna be maybe side uh, happening a lot in the early first maybe six minutes where Yerex is looking to kill, for example, mid one and it, it, it could have happened. I saw mid one was getting pretty low but he stopped up. But Chen decide, uh, probably decided to rotate bottom, which ended up in getting a kill. And S4 on top lane. Oh, what a nice play. Keep himself alive. Jerax was in the right place at the right time. Frost, I mean, he's going for a pure standard deck of Frost build. I think Batrider already had, I think, the wand at the time. But this, this hero is slow. This hero is really slow. And even when he gets his boots, he's not really going to be all that quick. Couple Napalm stacks now. The slows coming out from the Earth Spirit. This is going to be a more difficult lane for the Necrophos here. Like, yeah, you'll be fueling his stick, but you could just so easily kill the Necrophos and Ghost Shroud. It may get him, like, back up to full or full-ish HP, but if he does Ghost Shroud, Firefly with Napalm is just going to destroy him. Yeah, I mean, it, it both uh, force had a uh, nice rotation. Uh, just that no tail managed to TP out. But he lost a lot of time. Meanwhile, um... Gerax managed to get a first blood for his uh, Batrider. Oh, I mean, he actually got it, so that's pretty nice for him. But uh, generally, won it on the Batrider, of course. But Fada is probably gonna be pretty scared because now, with a small uh, level advantage on Batrider, it's gonna be a lot easier to actually kill the Fada now, even alone. And then it makes Gerax able to rotate on the other lanes a lot easier and feels better about it. So gotta be careful there, but mid one is looking pretty good in mid lane, honestly. I think it's doing a little bit better than I expected, and that was a nice setup. Oh, Resolution oh. is gonna have backup here. What a great play from Puppy. smoked up right behind him, and they did have a sun strike, wouldn't have quite been enough. Yeah, Puppy threw a boulder earlier, broke his golem in two, and then threw a couple more boulders, and that just does a lot of damage, man. Like, it's very easy to underestimate the damage that Creeps have said earlier, uh, specifically those golems. You get so many boulders thrown at you. Uh, with the cold oh snap as well, it makes it a little more painful. They will find a good angle on oh, fly, in the bottom lane. lane. Uh, this hero does not have a lot of armor. He's he has easy nothing to take down, on him. And he will be going down. No tail. Just gonna watch. He'll pop Metamorphosis. 
Put a little bit of damage back onto Ace, but uh, overall, that's a little bit of a mispositioned Witch Doctor that's very quickly punished. Yeah, I think bottom lane is going better than expected for Secret. The other lanes are doing pretty okay. I think uh, mid one is doing a little bit better than I expected. But uh, Poppy has been very good on sending uh, someone's mid uh, and pushing out a little bit, but he's still doing fine for himself as well, as well which is just uh, what an experienced Shen player does, you know. Most players wouldn't be able to be this efficient. Are they going for some weird smoke play? Or are they waiting for the shrine? Yeah, they're just waiting for the shrine, never mind. <laughs> they, they would have been spotted anyway if it was a really crazy smoke play. Now that would have been a curveball. It's like, hey, we're doing okay in this lane. Let's leave and smoke with our level 4 life stealer. They'll never expect it. <laughs> uh, you know, the element of surprise is a powerful thing, and Ace is actually just oh, going straight okay. to leave the lane. But he's like spotted by so many dire observer wards, so this is like, I mean, uh, not this this seems uh, like a waste of time. Oh, he's keeping top. <laughs> he's like, if I can't gank mid, I'm gonna gank top. And uh, if Bada was six, this would actually be possible. Are they baiting? Are they? They just baiting actually. But I think Fada might just die straight up. Well, well, S4 is not that healthy right now. And oh, nice silence. Oh, what stealer. a silence. He's diving in with the phase boots, and they will gank the Batrider with Lifestealer. Yes, that, that <laughs> sentence was just said. Uh, bottom lane in the meantime is going to be given over to Yapsor. So, you know, this type of rotation, we don't really see it all that early, but uh, we do see it quite often. If a core has any sort of gank power, any sort of jungling power, they will be willing to leave the lane and, and give the lane over to someone who could use it. A Venomancer, a Rubik, something along those lines. Uh, of course, you know, support Venomancer way back when used to be done all the time. But, uh, yeah, Rubik, gunning for that level 6, specifically a Yapsor Rubik. It, it is fine as long as they keep Ace farming. And it seems like he'll actually just stay on this top lane, so he should be able to get some pretty decent farm. I mean, that was so odd that I don't think OG expected it, expected it at all. It's it's so bizarre. Just, just watching what happened is bizarre. And then, like, how are you going to react to something like that? You know, it's you're not expecting that at all. Oh, now uh, Fada. He teleported down to this bottom lane. He has that Scythe. And Necrophos has a lot of magic damage. They'll miss the clap. They will land a Shockwave. And they will definitely land the Scythe, killing off No-Tail. Man, you, do ne you never expect these type of rotations. Like, to have that Lysir go top and then to have Fada to switch places with him afterwards. They'll nail the Terror Blade down to the floor. Fada, though, is going to be a little bit oh, mid lane. in the front lines. This cask is going to be thrown out, but the Chen Creeps buffering him so easily. They lift up Jerax out of his roll, and Fada, 5 stacks of Napalm, no big deal. We get the last hit with the level 3 Death Pulse regen. We'll be just fine. So it's going to be more kills for Secret on this bottom lane, while at the same time not costing Ace a thing. Yeah, and uh, mid one almost solo killed Resolution. One, if he had a high ground ward, he would have killed Resolution right there. So they are doing very well now. Even though Resolution is keeping up in farm, they are definitely dominating this this uh, early laning stage. And it looks like Puppy is going to go to green mode again with a Midas. He has just picked up the Glove of Haste so far. Could still be a Helmet Dominator, but I don't know if he has gone it. Uh, Midas every time. But uh, really unorthodox rotations that's been really good for Secret. This is kind of just what a Chen lets you do. Like, the, the amount of power you get in the early game is, is usually just going to be getting kills when Chen ganks and also taking down towers. That's like, it's always been like the two things that Chen does very early on get a couple creeps, kill someone, take their tower, rinse, repeat forever. But uh, to make those rotations as well with a Necrophos, with a life stealer, and like yeah they may be unexpected but I mean just looking at it, it makes complete sense it's like well it's Necrophos he has a scythe are you really gonna stick around and scythe the no heroes up on this top lane no you're gonna go and look for the terror blade the hero that is you know covered with armor which doesn't help him versus this magic damage you're gonna make that play every single time and then you know being able to get Jerax is kind of just an extra bonus there but uh this Chen, for sure, is kind of enabling Secret to just bully their way into these lanes that otherwise, if you just make that rotation with Fada and, and like, a, an Earthshaker, like, you don't get enough done there. You don't have enough damage. Oh, it's been uh, pretty pretty smart, you know. It's kind of, it make, it was unorthodox, but it's simple and it, it's actually good. Very nice. But now OGs kind of have a big problem where they're, all their free cores 
need a lot of farm, which is true for Secret as well. But Secret has a good early game, and they're looking to get that. But OG is struggling now. Uh, Terrorblade is going to TP to top lane, but it's... I mean, it's a pretty safe lane right now. But it's still like, will he lane against this Lifestealer good? He, he has to use meta, most likely, to farm well against a Lifestealer lane right now. And, you know, you can't just go around spending metas every now and then to just farm creeps. And uh, mid tower could be pressured by mid one if resolution leaves. And also, he's gonna have to play scared because if Bopi rotates in, he could also die and the tower gets pressured. And OG are so under farm right now that it's gonna be hard for them to respond properly. If Fly was like level 5 now, Chenkris would have uh, a lot of trouble diving anything. But he's still only level 3. And. Uh, it could be pretty hard the next few minutes for OG because they are in a rough spot right now. Especially, I think Batrider is not where he wants to be at all. It seems like OG are also kind of bound by their cooldowns. At least for this Terror Blade, he is not going to be able to make any super aggressive plays, especially up against a Life Stealer who's gunning for that level six mark, which is almost certainly going to keep him maybe not completely alive, but at least a very difficult hero to kill off. Uh, Lifestyle, though, with that rotation from bottom to top, you know, net worth-wise is still not looking all that hot compared to the Terra Blade. He just got a lot of extra CS above him, so Ace, though, he did get that successful gank off on the Batrider. He does have phase boots. is is still not quite mega farmed. He is going to have to lean on his allies a little bit, but really that's where this mid lane scenario comes into play. It's been rather quiet considering there's an Earth Spirit and a Chen on the field. Uh, you know, not that much action going in for mid one or against mid one, but uh, he's, he's gunning for that Midas, and he is outlining resolution just slightly, but uh, it's, it's just a matter of time, I feel, before Yapsor and Puppy start setting up for actual mid one kills. Like, gotta get that Sunstrike going. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was extract distracted. They were, they were writing in, in the minimap. It was pretty, pretty creative. They, that's if creative. <laughs> what I mean... mid one is... There we go. Erase it. Erase it. Oh. Hide your shame. Come on, mid one. This is this is a PG stream. We don't curse here. There's no bad words. Okay, we're looking to go. Yeah, that's that's good. Finally, feels like it's been quite some time, but it was probably only a few minutes. A classic EU pause, not the 20 minutes American <laughs> pauses that I've experienced. Yeah, that, that shit's not fun, man. <laughs> it's definitely not fun. There's only so much you could talk about, but uh, Chen at this point, level 4, does have two of, the, two of the better creeps to have as far as killing off Terrorblade is concerned. Oh no, you'll never oh expect my this. God. The ganking lifestealer in the mid lane with the Sunstrike. Resolution just trying to get out an LSA. He's still cold snapped though. Oh, he's he messes up one of those attacks, and he's actually going to survive because he lands that LSA onto mid one. Uh, yeah, th there's, there's an America's pause for you right there. But, uh, yeah, Ace just has a, has a free lane farm to farm top lane. He just doesn't want to, though. He just wants to go kill people. Yeah, and that's going to be a bit uh, uh, a problem for him now. Like, these rotations are great if he gets a kill. But if he doesn't, he loses quite a lot. But I, I think he's kind of accepted his role this game. Where he's not, he's not going to be the carry, you know. Mid one is going to be the carry. And even Fata could be the second in Westworld above him. I don't think he has a problem with that because he is countered by OG. Like OG's lineup is kind of made to counter him mainly. So he's like, well, if I'm not farmed, they're not countering the big heroes in our team, which is like a kind of a, it, it works both ways. You know, if he was super farmed, they they try counter him, but he he's just so farmed it doesn't matter. But I think he trusts his teammates now, and he doesn't only he doesn't only have to rely on. Fata and mid one, he also relies on both the support players, I think, which is the, the very big thing that he, he can definitely trust uh, Poppy Shen and uh, Yapso Rubik. Looking at this Lifestealer build, it uh, is pretty clear of where his intentions lie. He just open wounds is very rarely picked up because we don't really see Lifestealer go up against many heroes in lane. Like, the hero is usually just difficult to deal with in general. So he's able to go for, for this beast passive and leave open wounds at kind of just an emergency level 1, just to kind of break in case of emergency type spell, but opting now for 3 points of it. To get that initiation range off, it's really where it 
it only really more relevantly scales open wounds. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what Ace is able to do. He may want to join Puppy's gank squad. He just wants to be part of the gang. I get it now. Oh, uh, I was okay. uh, not paying attention, but Yapsu did die. He got wrecked trying to pick up an uh, inventory room, which he did get, though, to his credit. He did get it. Sure that Lena's working with that empty bottle. Hellbear Smasher wandering in. Fly is gonna be spotted. And for oh gee, there's gonna be so many creatures wandering around the map. You're not sure which one of them. I mean, has an he thinks it's a Shen creep. Like, I mean, if he's on point, he can know that it's not. But I don't think he will know. Yeah. Oh, it's not. <laughs> he doesn't have mana for rage. He can't commit. Oh. Oh, and now the Necrophos is gonna get rolled in on Firefly on the deck, and Necrophos heals Ghost Shroud, but. Can't get his stick charges off in time before that Firefly tick comes in. And they'll kill off Fada, actually ending a killing spree. This is a really cute playstyle by Ace, but uh, just a little bit of a shortage of mana there is... I mean, that OG make a, a pretty easy rotation, now putting no tail in this bottom lane. Doesn't quite yet have this Mask of Madness, but still his tower's gonna take an absolute beating. And a life stealer with this type of build, all alone, he cannot touch this lane. He's just gonna try to speak some experience out of here. Yeah, that was a bit uh, unfortunate for Ace. Kinda... He baited his teammate there. And will they be able to get the tower? Probably not with Fada arriving. One. But mid lane. Roll in. Oh, plus good stun. Player. There is an LSA, but it's off the mark. Is that going to matter? With the Laguna Blade, Dragon Slave, not quite enough damage. And now here comes the rotating life stealer. Ace is going to get onto S4 with the open wounds and do like, you know, 300 damage. Wow. But they will still save the invoker. That's really all they were interested in doing. Now he has the hand of Midas and he actually can use it as soon as he gets back out on the map. OG, I, I like these attempts. I'm not really sure if if this is really the playstyle you want to be playing as this life stealer, especially once you run out of mana. Man, you're pretty damn useless. He's gonna go for a Midas though. It's gonna be the second Midas for the team, and I think that actually is going to enable him to go for this somewhat successfully. Yeah, I, I think this is a good choice uh, by a. Not sure if it's him or the team. I think the team might be like realizing that he kind of lost a lot trying to help his team, and he did do. A lot though helping his team but he's gonna struggle and getting the minus is gonna make up for that in in like 50 minutes and another a smoke from og they don't have the blink bat though but fata is the hero that is very killable with a bat fighter and uh earth spirit not gonna have a lot of time to set up for napalm stacks fata does have a casual cloak right now so he's not incredibly easy to kill uh, well, Yapsor is incredibly easy to kill, although we will get a telekinesis off on the Batrider. Jack Firefly trying to make a break for it, but he's gonna get pulled in by the lasso. Still with the hand of God now up on Puppy. They will get a lot of space here as S4 is gonna get oh hit with a Sunshine and the Scythe. Yapsor barely took any HP from that. And that is gonna be a disastrous smoke gank there from OG Yapsor. Still, of course, does have that Firefly for later, but. And that's just the, the downside of roaming around as a bat rider. You will have the firefly, you'll have the lasso, but you don't actually do a lot of damage unless you have time to set up for him. Yeah, they kinda if they went for the same target, I think that could have worked out better. But as soon as there was a, a secondary hero there, it becomes a very hard gank, especially with you know, mid one landing a sun strike and then sight, that means an insta kill on any hero right now. And mid one also split pushed. He got at least one tower top. I'm not sure if the other tower went down before, but that's no, a was, lot of map. Yeah, that's a lot of map control now. Suddenly given to Secret with just one failed smoke gang from OG. They have insane map control right now. Ogre now at this point is just gonna make this jungle his home. I won't have a hand of God back up for a little while now, but still he's got the Midas taken away. He can still push this lane in, and. You know, maybe not against resolution necessarily, but if any one of these weaker heroes comes up towards top to defend it, mid one can so easily destroy them with a couple Forge Spirits, Sun Strike, Cold Snap, all that good stuff. So, uh, it's going to be really hard for OG to dislodge mid one from this top lane, and also looking at Puppy now, does have that completed Midas, is going to just power farm. I mean, already he's level 7, so he already has that level 4. Persuasion, not to mention the Hand of God, which came in pretty nicely there on the bottom lane. So, as you said, like Ace might not be dominating farm wise on the Lifestealer, but his allies are stepping up and then some.
No. Yeah, so I wonder if uh, Secrets has some sort of game plan now uh, that's not farming. Because right now they're just farming on everyone, uh, trying to farm as much as possible. But they do, they are running a Shen lineup. So, you know, it kind of feels weird if they're not trying to get towers and stuff, uh, like actively. They kind of got these top two towers kind of for free in a way. As in, it was not them who made the move to get the towers. OG made a mistake and they just took the two towers. But I think this is kind of a puppy's way to play Shen now, and maybe the way to play Shen overall. You're not gonna try and death push all the towers down, you're gonna, you're gonna play a bit more passive. Kind of like how Brood has evolved uh, nowadays, where you don't you don't just dominate lane and try and solo take, win the game in 50 minutes. You can kind of play it a bit safer. A couple of months ago, a couple of years ago, if you went for this type of build as Chen, played like this, like... You'd be, you'd be kicked from a team so quickly, because it just wouldn't work. But uh, it is definitely a style that works nowadays. Yapsor, doing his best Batrider impression, is going to kill off those illusions that they both got him. And now he's invisible with Firefly. Huh. Uh, that's not really going to be doing him many favors here, for sure. But uh, he was going to run out of that spell anyway. But still smoked up on Puppy. Yapsor is invisible properly right now with the rune pickup. And they're going to look to make an aggressive play, perhaps into the opponent jungle. Rada's also here, and they do have a scythe at the ready. Not quite sure if it's enough damage to kill off Resolution. Doesn't seem like they actually know that Resolution's there. They do know, however, that there's a hero over here, and it's Fly. They will just demolish the Witch Doctor. Super easy kill. And now, they're kind of hoping that someone teleports into the Oh, Resolution? Lane. Resolution is spotted now. Oh, but... that was so close. Yep, so almost managed to lift him. He's out of invis too, so Resolution has a close brush with death. Jerax is not looking too hot either though, he's gonna get lifted up by Yapsor. Sunstrike is going to be off the mark, but his rollout is kinda cancelled as they box him in. He'll kick Fada away, maybe deny that scythe, but still he's gonna go down. Yeah, they are gonna get a tower from OG No Tail. He's gonna take the bottom tower, which is very important. Getting this bottom tower means a lot because you lost your top towers, so the opponent gonna play on that map control. So if you get the bottom towers, you can kind of match that yeah, to an extent. That's very nice. And Resolution is defending mid lane pretty well, as that hero is known for. Rick's gonna grab a dragon slave for himself as Bada still does have that scythe. Uh, just gonna keep shoving this one out. Is pretty much ready to fight. He does have that hood and looks like. Four staff is the next item. Something a little bit more magically aggressive like the Veil, which is going to be just okay in this game if he is ever going to pick it up. So it does seem like Secret are gearing up for, you know, one of these plays that you would expect from a check, that actual death ball. And maybe not like suicide for the towers, but uh, make a play, get a tower, rinse, repeat. And every single time you do that, you cut down on the Terror Blades options for farming. And of course, Lena needs her farm, Batrider. He does have a Blink Dagger, so he doesn't really need that much farm moving forward, but it does seem like Secret are getting their tools up. They could make this play, but with three Midas hands working for them, they just sit back and farm. Is there really any risk involved there? It does maybe feel like, oh gee, they expect this push to be coming their way, where in actuality they should be the ones making the aggressive plays with this bat. Yeah, I think they have to almost do something soon on, uh, on OG. Mid one is totally free farming, completely uncontested, and you know, that that sounds scary, you know, mid one invoker free farming, haven't really had any pressure on him for 17 minutes, so, mid resolution is matching his farm, so that's good, but, oh mid lane, this is a Absolutely. very weird goal. Oh, again sees it coming, telekinesis S4, and now S4, he doesn't have a 4 staff, Sunstrike is gonna land. Yapsor reflexes. I mean, did, did he get like spotted by the tower? I mean, he was he on running? the tower. I think that was sloppy. I think that was pretty sloppy by S4. Well, either way, Blink Dagger over the tower to grab a Rubik at least was supposed to be the play. Not quite going to work out the way they want, and that Blink Dagger now revealed. At least he still has that lasso, so if there is going to be a little bit of a skirmish. They will still be ready for that, but Puppy. He's got himself or fly. a hood, he's gonna go for a pipe for the team. And they're recognizing the heroes that are problematic right now, it's resolution mostly. 
It will be pretty hard countered. They're gonna roll in miss, but they do get the lasso off onto the Rubik, bring him down, but at what cost? Ace is gonna tear into that Bat Rider. Now jump into Fada, who's just gonna try to escape from No Tail and Jerax with the Ghost Shroud. Not really sure if that's gonna work as Resolution is still here to do that damage. LSA and the right clicks, they'll take oh, him down yeah, and they'll take down Ace. Off to the side, Puppy will try to TP. Looks like he'll survive his creep. Goon squad, uh, one creep, two creep, three goes down. They save the centaur. And that is, once again, a fight where mid one is, yes, farming, but OG Radiant make a pretty nice turnaround. And they'll get a tier one tower for it. Yeah, nice play from OG. They realized uh, mid one is out on an adventure Radiant trying to tower. kill Fly. And Fly managed to survive by just duking a sunstrike. Mid one used the sunstrike for that kill, so he can't use it in team fight either. And uh, that was that was a really nice play from OG. OG, they, the bad they died, but that's whatever. And resolution is, is he is snowballing as well. Oh, and he oh, should tank game. this. Oh, sound strike. A nice attempt, but uh, it wouldn't have been enough. So resolution is top of the network, which is pretty impressive considering how how much mid one has done. You know, he took two tower top lane. He's be farming. And uh, Resolution has been on a much smaller area to farm, but the hero is very good at farming as well. You know, just dragon slaving and using furry soul, you farm very fast. So he's gonna be forced to have a lot of impact this game. And also, No Tail is having a comeback now. He is he was not this high in net worth a few minutes ago, and he is really starting to climb. Secret are going to stick to the game plan here. Fada now has a blink dagger of his own. And this fight, unlike the last, will have everyone here from Secret. Mid-1 joining Dyer's the smoke party. Sounds like do have that pipe completed. So a large increase in power. Despite having dropped that last fight, Bill's Secret are feeling pretty comfortable around the map. But you got to remember that it's OG have their increases in power as well. This Bloodstone up and lean up to 15 charges. We have a Blink Dagger on the Earth Spirit. It's going to be happening pretty quickly. Scythe immediately onto S4. We'll get the kill. That is not a scythe kill, but still, that's a bat rider down, which means that as far as initiation is concerned, OG really only have this Earth Spirit to start in. You really want to roll into all these heroes as Earth Spirits? I'm not really sure if that's uh, the best idea. Yeah, they're gonna get our feet tower here. And uh, no t OG are not doing much on other lanes. They're getting farmed, but they're not pressuring any objectives. And now Roche becomes a lot easier. Both their Top, both towers in mid and top are down, and Roche is very hard to contest. There's a shine up, but having only a shine to be TPing to is gonna be pretty simple to deal with from Secret. As OG's initiation is, is kind of like Luster, you know, they have a Bat Rider, but he only has a blink. Doesn't have like a four step to, to get around Roche pit in a smooth way. Yarex has a blink, which is, I think, the bigger deal almost. I feel like Yerax Aegis snatches I've seen before. Bottom lane. Oh, this One. could be an. Oh, that read. Oh, the my out of range. God. Wow. There, there is no vision anywhere here for the Radiant. Like, they are just completely blind in their own jungle. But Invoker was going back to base. So, uh, sometimes you just ghost walk back to the base and. With the read that no one else is on the map anywhere, and that they might be going down towards them, Mid One is going to keep himself alive. Uh, you know, add Shadow Blade Lena to the top of to the list of tools to initiate right now for OG, but uh, not that time. Looks like they may smoke up under a dire obs. I mean, even if they don't smoke right now, it's still the dire seeing absolutely everything with this really deep observer. <laughs> you don't expect this one, given the circumstance. I believe tower. someone just pinged out. The likes of just jumped into this Necrophos, and they will smoke out eventually. I'm not sure if they moved out of range and then smoked. But either way, they're still uh, I think looking. They I'm not really sure if there are any opportunities nearby, though. Yeah, Secret of Pain, this, this is a pretty weird smoke by them, as in, like, they, you know, they infested Father, and he didn't join the smoke. So it's a pretty peculiar one. Uh, but OG's reaction is just to get out completely. Which says that they are they are very scared of Secret right now. If they felt like they had were like very good matched, I think they would have been more cocky and know that okay they smoke, we set up on our high ground somewhere, on a shrine or whatever, and then we play from there. But they're gonna go for their own counter smoke. And it seems like Secret kinda has an idea as well, you know. All grouped up. If OG go up into this area, they're gonna be walking into a funnel up against an invoker. 
And that is not a good idea. We already saw how much damage Invoker can do with a uh, combo on the Lina. They will oh. run into Fada first. He does grab his Relic though, so even if he dies, not a big deal. He also has his Hood for the Barrier with Hand of God. He will get Death Warded as well, and finally will go down. Is there any response here from Secret? The Firefly already on the deck. Oh, they could, in theory, go for a play. They will steal Conjure Image. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's time to right-click things as Rubik. Oh, They'll okay. catch the Terrorblade out in a bad position with the Rock. Do a lot of damage to him, and Jarek's right behind him. Jarek is going to die to the dots. As no oh, he got hit by EMP. He's out of no mana. Mana. He got hit with the EMP, and now he can't actually sunder anything. Fly's going to try to keep him alive with that heal, but... He's going to put himself at a lot of risk in doing so. No-Tail is going to actually not get hit with that Ice Wall, but still he doesn't have any mana, so I don't see how he's going to get away from this one, especially when the Sun Strike it was, doesn't even matter. Ace gets the kill. And for Secrets, that was kind of a freebie, honestly. It does feel like OG had a, a free passage out, or they could have continued fighting as long as No-Tail isn't the one in the front. Yeah. Oh, Farah, are you going to get a kill on S4? The thing is that, that if he has mana for Sunder, you know, there's no way Secret fights into that. But because the EMP hits, even though it's not a very high level yet, it just means he can Sunder. And then it's it's pretty easy fight for Secret. They can just chase. They know that there's not going to be this insane counterplay that Ace has to play. Super scared of. Even mid one has to be somewhat scared of it. So and they don't have any Arcanes, I think, at all. So I wonder if 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 he should try and counter it a bit. So I feel like mid one is gonna be playing a bit around EMP uh, now that he's getting very up level. You generally just go for tornado EMP. And, uh, it, I think it's a bit scary for No Tail to to not have a response to that. It is not even how do I get rid of this. It's not even maxed out just yet that EMP. But uh, as the Wex is built up, Terra Blade. I guess the way you play around it is by what he's doing right now. You can't really depend on your allies to dissemble all their boots and start getting arcanes, although that would be like the dream scenario. He's just going to build stat items and you know, value stat items. I have Scotty on the Terra Blade is still an entirely normal build. Having more intelligence, making sure that EMP doesn't completely drain him out. It's, it's a pretty decent way to go for sure, but it's going to take him quite a long time to actually get those items up. I have Scotty is not a cheap item. So I mean, if for he gets right now, 18. it seems like Secret do have this kind of ace in the hole in that EMP. If it does land on the Terra Blade, and if they're if he spent any mana beforehand, which he will on Mantis Tile, Metamorphosis, like it's not that hard to burn him out. And OG just have to be careful about that Invoker. He's been farming the entire game, and this is kind of the situation they've got themselves in because of the lack of pressure on mid one. If he can get 18, though, he is fine. But he's not farming. He, in experience, he's not doing great. He's keeping up a network, but he's kind of under leveled, I guess. He's he's not super under leveled, but he's I w he kind of wish he was like 17 or close to 17 by now. But he needs to kind of rush for that before they take team fight, which is kind of a weird thing, you know. Or terribly like I need my level three ultimate before we can Dyer's fight. But that's kind of the situation he's in. Dyer's we are not gonna wait on top lane at least. They'll jump in towards the Chen. Pipe seemingly doesn't matter there, as they will just annihilate him with that Lina damage. Bottom lane is being pushed by mid one, very similar to the situations we saw earlier with Secret, leaving mid one to his own devices and you know making some we'll, we'll call those trades elsewhere. But all this Midas gold, man, it's been a long time since they've been picked up at this point. Life Stealer, the roaming Life Stealer, yes, has the Maelstrom and the Armlet. Fada's got the Radiance, so he has his, like, uh, kind of Midas item as well for helping him farm. And, of course, Chen does have that pipe, and mid one has, like, all the items he could ever want, ever. So, this sitting back and farming style for Secret is working out pretty well for them. Just looking at this net worth, like, yeah, they took a couple of decent fights earlier, but they're still just climbing and climbing in gold. And for OG, Resolution's doing pretty well for himself. He can keep up and farm. No tell keep up and farm, but there's really not that much room for anyone else. Like, Blink Dagger on Jerax is most likely all he's going to get unless he, like, survives a big fight. Yeah, it's gonna... I think Resolution needs to do some heavy lifting right now. Uh, Batrider got the 4 stuff though, finally, I might add. The, the network difference is, is starting to become a, a bit troubling for OG. 
however, I think they definitely have a, have a good chance at this game still. But the secret has picked up their core items. You know, the Radiance Necro. Uh, Lysteli got the like base of item that he kind of needs to actually kill people at this stage. And uh, mid one has got the Blink Ags BOT, so he can both pressure lanes and team fight pretty well. And are they going for a smoke play? They do not seem to have a smoke on them though, so they're just gonna run in apparently. Or he's getting a smoke on Chen. It seems a bit rushed, as in they should have been smoking here. Bada and Yapsor still will move up towards top lane. Blink Dagger on the Necrophos, Blink Dagger on the Rubik. Getting anywhere near someone and they are going to very quickly go down. Not really your uh, Storm Spirit life to their combo, but uh, it's, it's budget, it'll work in a pinch. Radiance Poke around a little bit, uh, OG attack. will dodge that one in its entirety. And they are pushing down this bottom lane slowly but surely. Resolution though, not feeling comfortable enough to actually hit this tower. I don't think he really should. Uh, he, he'd probably get away with it, honestly. Just a couple shots, what could it really hurt? He is just making sure that these lanes are keeping in OG's favor, just keeping Secret back. It, it does feel like, though, it's a matter of time before it, I expect it'll be Secret to go in. For that Roche Pit first. Play some OBS, maybe get a pick off if they can, like a Bat Rider kill will be huge. You know, Bat Rider is oh, actually. Oh, is he gonna blink over? Fata bit. blinks over. That's was a bit S4 was standing there a second ago. But the game has slowed down a lot. And uh, it doesn't really favor a particular team, I think. I think the Midas S doesn't really have more farm potential right now at this stage. Kinda it kinda did its job and now it's just nice. Like, he is out is gonna outform an Invoker, even though Invoker is having Midas. Oh, he is very far out on his solution. He has to be Kibido. He is gonna have to pop it, I think. He's gonna get pushed oh right back. Oh my god, Mid one is playing so well. It's all blind here from Mid one. Sunstrike attempted. Lina is going to narrowly get out of that tornado range as well, and we'll just get out of there, preserving that 10 second BKB charge. But, and resolution, uh, uh Mid one. Doing some serious damage by not having the vision. This has been like at least two minutes now where Secret have been balled up as four or five heroes and not really doing all that much. And as I say that, they will immediately jump into that Roach Pit. Double damage on life, so they're gonna facilitate this, but No Tail is gonna send a clone in and immediately scout this out. For Secrets, they definitely do have a powerful fight in this area, but answering the Bat Rider again is going to be very, very difficult, especially if it is Yapsor himself to get grabbed by S4. But right now, Fada's the only one presenting an S4. By having that 4 staff, doesn't look like he's super interested in going in right now. No, he has to use Firefly. You, you don't want to initiate if you don't have Firefly. Unless it's like an insane... Like, like it's so good that you have to go. But, uh... A game is very slow right now. Both teams are making some minor moves. Or Secret are making some minor moves to find pickoffs, But they're not... They haven't used the smoke in some time, you know. If if they use smoke, it would be they could go a bit deeper. But they're just hoping to find someone without using the smoke and then getting a free roche. But OG has been playing not only safe, but they they played safe, but they managed to farm at the same time, which is pretty good for them. And another time, oh. Be grabbed by S4. The pipe is going to help him quite a bit. As Fada does jump in right into the middle of things. Puppy will go down. Hand of God now off the table. As Ace is going to try to gun for fly, but doesn't have actually have any true sight. Resolution they can have quite a bit of damage from the Invoker as well. DKB though will be able to slip out and is in the back. It's Ace by himself getting picked off. There's the Ice Wall and the Laguna Blade stolen by Yapsor, which will kill off No Tail. And they'll also drop fly, but at the cost of Vada. Yapsor mid one, the sole survivors here as they do very aggressively look for some of those fights. And they'll maybe find S4 oh, and four staff. Just gets him up to the high ground. Resolution is still here. He thinks Invis is going to keep him safe. He's going to make a lot of damage. Pushed back by the Deafening Blast. Couple more right clicks will do him in. Actually does end up killing himself. But Secret, that Sentry and Ob's combo dropping a little bit too late to get that Lifestealer some of those early kills. And is going to cost them quite a bit there. Yeah, that was a pretty good team fight from Secret. Especially, I think Rubik played very well and made one, of course. Uh, terribly was he was scarily close to actually getting a sunder off and if he did I'm pretty sure a secret would have gotten wiped so they they did realize they could blow him up and they did and both uh, 
of uh, the follow-up and the initiation was, or I guess the reactive pay from Chico was decent at least, and then they coordinated well enough to blow a turret bit up, which is not always easy in a chaotic fight like that. But OG do show some sign of life, and it also it's also scary, you know, if he gets a Sunder off there, I'm pretty sure they get wiped, so Secret has to play according to that. But there's a Linkus on mid one as well, so that's also, you have to be super scared uh, about that, because he is definitely the type of player that could realize who is gonna Sunder and place it on the hero, even. There's also a pretty ideal scenario there. For OG, as far as initiation is concerned, would be, I think, uh, grabbing Absor hasn't really worked out so far, but uh, grabbing Puppy, making sure that all these auras that he's offering to his team are off the table. No inside aura, no barrier for his team. I think it was just a personal barrier from the pipe, and of course, no Hand of God. It's, uh, it's a lot of assets that Secret has at their disposal, just completely off the table first thing, so if Espor can replicate that a handful more times, then, yeah, he'll be pretty clean state of game. The BKB on him, he'll make it it's almost impossible for Secret to actually do anything about uh, a lasso play. Scythe can stun, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's just a fight losing move if you just use Scythe to cancel a Batrider's initiation and you don't have it afterwards with no Ags or anything like that. So Secret do have to watch out, do have to keep their obs up and they will look to smoke in. Did Yapsor just break his smoke? Yeah. Plus the Laguna Blade, and uh, I guess we'll call this a Rubik fading. I mean, it's fine. Game. You don't have to find my smoke. I think for my smoke is generally better. As for they will just you want find to find a target nearby. There is a bat. There's a Terror Blade. Just illusions for right now. Flies in a pretty vulnerable spot right now, and they will catch him with a cold snap. They do silence the invoker, but it doesn't matter. He's super dead. Puppy's charging forward. Oh, and Fata is as well with the Ghost Shroud slowing down a handful of heroes. Ace is going to pop out. S4 is going to force staff out without using a lasso. And with the tornado on him, he may just go down to that Scythe now. Onto the Terror Blade. Oh. Sunstrike there as well. Will not connect. It will be a forced buyback onto Fly as from the high ground. He is going to do quite a bit of damage to this Death Warp. We can see now the difference that a Chen makes. With the Hand of God, will keep them all fairly healthy. Laguna Blade still stolen. We'll end up killing off No Tail, fought with the Ghost Shroud, trying to slip out right now. Derek, he is going to keep that Magnetize on the enemies, but it's not doing quite enough with that Insight Aura. They'll try to go for the Life Stealer, but end up giving over another spell towards Yapsor. Resolution on the front lines. Oh, oh. the dodge of the Laguna Blade from Yapsor. We said earlier, he's he's a he's an above average Rubik player. That Jesus. was brutal. What an outplay from Yapsor. Not only, you know, dodging the Laguna Blade, but the Laguna Blade to kill uh, Terror Blade earlier. Ah, that was a precious watch for sure. And uh, I was gonna say that Secret like initiation. They, they, they're not having an easy time to find, but then mid one is like, okay, I'm done. I'm just gonna kill a hero here, and then you can do whatever. And they just kinda overrun OG, but. Unfortunately, S4 kind of had to just try and get over the high run, and he did, but mid one is... I think mid one and Japs are just playing way above the even like average for the top pros. Oh, oh, oh what a reaction skills from mid one. Sidesteps the LSA. Ice Wall, though, is off the mark. Yapsor will fix that as he throws Resolution right back in. There is no suicide. There's no BKB. There is only death for Resolution. They will... Kind of show off mid one's gem, but uh, it's going to be certainly well worth it. Getting rid of all those er observer sentries that were hanging around the mid lane. Uh, you know, a pretty easy clear out there. Lena does have quite a few bloodstone charges, so respawn timer not going to be too bad for her. But it does seem like Secret now with this double life on the Necrophos. Thinking about making a little more of an aggressive play. We have a another life stealer, Wild Wing gank. Pacing around looking for some opportunities. Mid one is going to set up for this bottom lane. Looks like they're just going to try to make this their home. And at this point, it seems like it, it is pretty much all in the hands of S4 and No Tails Sunder. If they land those spells, they have a shot. But otherwise, it's looking pretty darn rough against the Sages. Yeah, I think uh, Yasuo is kind of like becoming too scary in a weird way. You know, the, the position 5 Rubik is too scary. But that's kind of what's approaching for OG now. Where, sure, they can kill a... They can blow up a core now, but even then you are very far behind and even the supports are having a very, very high impact at this stage. And uh, Pape doesn't have any... he has like aura items, so he's not 
is not doing like insane things like uh, Yapsor and uh, and mid one, but he's still probably the hero we have to kill first. So it's easier for Seeker to play around because Puppy has to die. So easy to disrespect. Or oh, top lane. The value they have on the aura. They will catch Can they follow up? Top, so. The lasso, they'll bring him ah, back. Ah, they Maybe. messed up. Yeah, they don't Radiant quite have enough CC and damage there. So mid one's gonna survive and fly. Oh, bottom lane. Left behind by his allies. They are all were on top lane partying. He was left alone at home. Feels bad. Mid one can't TP. Maybe catch the Rubik here. That's a self fuel and a blink out. Now it's gonna set up perfectly. This damage from Lina though is being mostly blocked by the auras from Puppy. They still will finally kill off the Rubik in the end. DKB and resolution holy strong for right now, but the scythe will oh. put a quick end to that terror blade resolution now the only one who's really doing damage and with the nukes from the chen will get kicked out by jerax oh yeah still right. is hit with that cold snap but it looks like out of radiance range we'll be able to make it back to her fountain s4 though maybe doesn't have that luxury four staff down to the low ground now we live in a mirror world seems like for this fight s4 blinking away from his base away from any help maybe he's just gonna waste some time but uh he's being chased down by an invoker a pissed off invoker at that unstoppable for mid one and Ace and Fada in the meantime both very healthy after having very quickly dealt with that Terror Blade will deal with bottom lane Rax and maybe even a second lane. Puppy still has his entire army alive. I don't know how he does it, but uh, they will go for two and with no Terror Blade to 50, I don't know if they have enough damage here. Fada, he doesn't have another scythe or anything like that, but man, they don't really need a scythe. They, there's no Terror Blade. To need to scythe down. They'll just be happy going in with perhaps another Infest or another Deafening Blast combo on mid one. Just to make the conservative play and fall back for right now. They are still sitting in on Aegis on Farah, so they might be gonna re go soon. Uh, most of the time, I think you would go and kill Shrines here, but with the Aegis still intact, there is definitely a timing they could go for. Their position is perfectly spotted by OG's Creep Wave. OG still have a couple more seconds now until their Terror Blade is up. We'll have a buyback as well. Yapsor is the hero that they're waiting for, and he is back. They're going to try to wait for someone to defend at bottom lane, perhaps, and jump on him. Fod is definitely thinking about it, but Resolution. BKB jump in sight. No BKB available here. 100 seconds. Lina is dead. And Fada is going to get lassoed, but his Aegis is going to mean that they don't have to actually go and save him. They can let him die. At least for right now, and you have a BKB for a second life. They buy out on resolution, and Bottom may need some help here. The stuns oh. are gonna land perfectly on the mark. BKB not used just yet. It's a little bit too late. As fly with the damage will take him down, but now they have to deal with everyone else. Mid one is in the front lines right now, not where he wants to be. He's gonna get caught with the stuns and will be brought down, giving the gem over to OG. Rolling forward, looking for more. Yapsor is gonna reflect up. Pretty much everyone has a blink out of here. Maybe no, can't quite get it out. Now they're on to the life stealer as well. They lift him up. Ace gonna try to TP out of here. Lasso is not available. They sunder him for damage. It's not gonna do enough. They do take down a hell of a lot there, OG. But the cost, the cost is high. They lose mid racks and they do have to buy back on Melina. The upside is that they still have meta though, so this push is is not gonna be. What have we here? It's not gonna take a long time. This is gonna be a lot of damage coming towards Secret now, and I think. I'm pretty sure they're gonna be forced to buy back, but the question is how many and who. That's the main. I, I think it should be mid one right now, and they wait for the other. There it is. This is an arcane rune terror blade. So even more illusions. He'll have another metamorphosis sooner. Let's see what mid one can do. Invoker is pretty much the king of defending high ground. Oh, hey, Barret is actually gonna jump in on someone else instead. It's the life stealer who is in a lot of trouble, but with the Rage, will actually consider turning around onto Jerax. Not quite enough damage there. Disarm goes off on a no-tail resolution as well. Kind of getting bottled up here in this choke point. Sunstrike does Radiance land perfectly onto the Terror Blade, but no more chase. No, there is chase. Mid one gonna blink forward, finds the poor, poor Witch Doctor. And uh, he's not get taken down that. by the summons. They're also looking at no-tail, trying to TP out, kick out from Jerax. Oh. Will prevent them from actually stunning him. That's gonna cost Jerax's life, but Jerax not to be outdone by Yapsor's Clutch plays is gonna make a clutch play of his own, securing them their terror blade. Mid one though still wants in on S4, who is gonna have that gem to give over. Back to no secret. buyback on him. And yeah, he doesn't have a buyback, so it's just two, maybe three versus five right now. As secret are going to push in once more, perhaps to finish off that mid racks. But we do have Fada 
His Radiance is on with the Shadow Blade, which is <laughs> not exactly sneaky. But uh, still, this is going to be really tough for OG to defend against. We'll have the Witch Doctor buyback as well, but just 15 seconds respawn. It will actually extend it. This range rack was pretty much forfeit anyway, so I'm not entirely sure if that timing was uh, really what they want. But the secret, they do want everything right now. They're going to look for the Megas. Resolution with the LSA will land it onto Ace. We're going to play, give you quite a bit of damage, but it will be stolen once again by Yapsor Ace. With the auras from Puppy, will just take no damage from that Lina's right clicks. And he also has that AC, of course. He will be able to slip out to safety, provide a little more damage with that Assault Cuirass. For his team to right click down these buildings. Fada gonna jump right in the scythe onto the No Tail Terror Blade. They'll take him down with the Laguna Blade, perfectly layered onto him. He's down for 100 seconds. They may bring down Ace, they may not, but ultimately it doesn't even matter because Resolution, he's gonna have to kill himself as Jerax is gonna run off to the back side of the fight. He will survive, but his base will not. The game will be ended in favor of Secret. My god, you jump in, you scythe a Terror Blade, and then you drop everything on him, including a Laguna Blade stolen. Yeah, it works pretty well. Yeah, even though I think they had a lot.